Our sermon title for this morning is Trusting the Voice. Trusting the Voice. Job, the book of Job, is well known through the cliche about the patience of Job. However, although this text was originally written in Hebrew, when translated for the Greek believers, the Greek term as translated for patience means not so much patience as it means endurance, persistence, or steadfastness. So throughout the 42 chapters of Job, we hear various voices. God's, Satan's, Job's wife, Job's three friends, well really four, because one finally spoke up when he became so disgusted with what the other three were saying, the other three wiser friends who were elders. And of course we hear Job's voice. We also hear God's voice telling Satan to test his noble servant Job for faithfulness. And then we hear Satan's voice telling God, okay, you're giving up Job, but you'll see that Job's real self wants you to allow me to put him through a whole lot of stuff to handle up on him. Then you have Job's wife, who orders him to curse God and die since everything is going wrong. Why should he want to live with a partner like that? You don't need enemies. Then the three friends, and that's why I always tell people when they come in and they're talking to me, I say, be careful when you listen to your friends. Make sure that your friend's recommendation is in line with what God is telling you to do. We all need encouragement. But those three friends watched poor Job for seven days without saying a word. And when they finally started to speak, they just kept ordering Job to admit that he had sinned, since that's why all these horrific things were happening to him. Anybody have any friends like that? If you do, get rid of them. Then the fourth friend, who became, as I said earlier, so fed up with the other three so-called wiser friends, but remained silent until he couldn't take it anymore, he finally spoke up. And the friend said in his speech, this is a, just a little background story, leading up to our text, how God's voice is heard and how God speaks along with why God speaks. But he too, that more wiser friend, didn't have the full story either. And of course, Job's voice, when he curses the day he was born and curses even the thought of his conception. Job's voice is heard through the anguish when he demands a face to face with God so that he can defend himself with God, since he is a righteous man, a good man. You know how we say sometimes, from the pulpit to the pews, oh, I'm a good person. This shouldn't be happening to me. Why am I going through this? What's going on? Job, too, placed God first in his life but things were still going on. Illness, lost his family, boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. 
lost his wife and his children, became broke. Then God's voice, again telling Job, wait, where were you when I laid the foundation? Where were you? Wait, Job, where were you? Yes, various voices. We can place voices or should attempt to place the voices we hear. And yes, all of us hear some type of voices. Don't think something is wrong with you. We can place those voices into three categories. And it may not be a voice like I'm speaking to you right now, but the three categories are self, Satan's, and God's. Those are the three categories, self, Satan, Satan's, and God's. We should test the voices we hear with guidance from God's Word, the Bible. That's why this was placed on my heart because I wanted to go in another direction with our kids. But that was placed on my heart to go with them through the shepherd's psalm. And I'm admonishing you, please go over it with those kids so they can internalize it, so they can know what to hold on to. With self, that voice is telling you to do something for that of personal gain, probably leading to sin. But Scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now with Satan, that voice tells us to do something that brings about a disruption with our relationship with God again leading to sin scripture said scripture says and the serpent said to the woman ye shall not surely die we remember the story god said you can eat of any fruit or any not of any fruit i'm sorry of any tree in this garden but do not eat of this tree and the serpent says, oh, you're not going to die. But with God, the voice telling us to remain still, obey, or move towards someone or something as a part of a specific purpose, as a part of God's overall plan, as known only to God. I love Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares God, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. Test the voice. Be honest with yourself. Test the voice. All these voices come at us as with Job. But when we are in relationship with God and are willing to surrender and submit to God, the distinction as to whose voice is the voice we must follow becomes clearer. The voice becomes clearer when we pray and wait for God's response to us. The voice becomes clearer when we spend time in God's Word, struggling with the meaning of passages and remembering that this entire Bible right here is based upon a community of people in relationship with God, making mistakes, but because of God's mercy, because of God's grace, God still holds on to them. We are told in chapter 33, for God does speak now one way, now another, though people may not receive it. Just like, did you always listen to what your parents told you to do? 
Be honest, did you? I know I didn't. What was that? Okay, you listened, but you didn't do it. God does speak to us through issues, dreams, afflictions, blessings, people, songs, I hope sermons, scriptures, daily life. A small, still voice. Nature. We're hearing the voice of God right now through the beauty. Or even when it's snowing, or even when it's raining, God's voice. And sometimes there's no response. God speaks however God chooses because of God's sovereignty, because of God's power. God can do whatever and however God wants to do it because God is God. You may be thinking, this is not fair. But why not? Didn't God create the heaven and the earth? Do we maintain ourselves? No. We are reminded that God does talk to us. At times we are just too hard-headed and refuse to hear and receive God's voice. Just like the wonderful congregant said right here, we heard it, didn't do it. Because we want to control every situation ourselves. But we have stories that God speaks. And here are a few folks. Let me see if you remember them. God spoke to Adam and Eve about sin. Didn't God do it? God spoke to Noah and gave him directions about building a boat. Didn't God do it? God spoke to Abraham and commanded him to follow God's leading, which would bring about the blessing of being the father of an entire nation. God spoke to Jacob and told him to go to Egypt. God spoke to Moses and sent him to lead God's people out of Egypt and gave him the Ten Commandments. God spoke to Joshua and told him he would be with him just like he was with Moses. God spoke to Samuel and told Samuel that I have chosen you to be my spokesperson. God spoke to Isaiah and told him to go to the people with God's message. God spoke to Jeremiah and encouraged him to be his prophet. God spoke to Ezekiel and sent him to Israel to warn them about coming to judgment. God spoke to Reverend Sheila Shows Ross and told her to come to 88 South Street First Baptist Church. God speaks, but we have to be obedient and listen. But most of all, God spoke to God's self and said, Look, I've sent you prophets, provided commandments, made the people repent with animal sacrifices, but it hasn't been good enough. I have to go down to earth and save my people. God spoke to God's self, and thanks be to God, God listened and came down in the form of a baby. All of this, it was a long background, but I have to give it to you so you can understand those verses that I read. Chapter 42 provides us with ways or strategies as to how we can hear God's voice. The strategies are through acceptance of certain things. First, accept that God can do all things. That's the first thing. That God's plan will not be stopped. When the horrific things happen in the world, but God still wants it to go another way, there may be a detour, but it will be as God planned. So first, 
except that God can do all things. Second, except that we just can't understand everything that God does because of God's sovereignty. We can't control what's out of our control. We can't control what's out of our control. I'm hitting myself because I'm admitting I try to control a lot of stuff. But because I finally submit, I understand and accept that God controls it all. But I need to tell you this. God controls it all, but God gives us free will and free choice. So a lot of things that we put on God, it's really humanity. It's humanity that's doing it. All of the ugliness, it's humanity. It's not God. And lastly, accept that the only way to hear God's voice is to be in a true and committed relationship with God. It's in the text. Job says, My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. When you surrender, accept, and experience God, then we too can write our own Bible stories of God's faithfulness, of God's deliverance. It may not be exactly how we had hoped to be delivered, but the ultimate piece is we had been delivered. The experiences, good or bad, we walk through allow us to hear God clear. Yes, hear God clear, see God clear, since we accept that it was only God who brought us through. 33.14 says, For God speaks in one way and in two, though people do not receive it. Then, I love verse 5 of chapter 42. It says, I had heard of you, God, that's what Job is saying, by the hearing of the ear. But now my eyes see you. How did Job see God? Through God's faithfulness. And people always tell me, well, you always talk about how God restored, but his family still had died. He still had lost all of his livestock. Yes, and Job could never get that back. But God blessed Job with more, with more. Do we know if this is a real story? We don't know for sure it's in the Bible. We have faith, but we hold on because we say, since God, since it's told that God did it for Job, and Job questioned God, Job cursed the day, that he was born, then we can say, since Jesus did it for Job, he'll do it for me too. Trusting the voice. I melt when I see this commercial. It's a Pampers commercial. And this woman delivers a baby. Some of you all are smiling. You may know what, 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 what commercial I'm talking about. And they clean the baby up, and they put the baby on the mom's chest. And at the end of the commercial, that baby is laying on that mom's chest and looking up at that mom with intense eyes, as if to say, I don't know who you are. But I like the way the voice is sounding. That mama, you can't hear what she's saying. That's not the important part. She's saying something. But that baby is looking up and just laying there with such complete trust. Yes, the baby can't do anything for himself or herself. But the point I'm making is we have to be just like that baby. 
hearing that voice. And I'm sure if a voice was screaming at that baby, baby would not have listened and been so comforted. No God's voice. No God's voice. And be willing to submit to God's voice, trusting in that voice. And every time you see that commercial, I hope you think of this message. And look how that baby looks up to God. Oh, that was a Freudian slip. Look up. Look at how that baby looked at his or her parent. And that's the way we're supposed to look at God with complete trust. Is there anyone this morning who is saying, you know, I trust God like that. And I want to give my life over to God. Just like that. You can come as a candidate for baptism. All you have to do is confess in your heart and confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Savior. And you can come as a candidate for baptism. Or if you already have a relationship with God and just looking for a church home, and First Baptist, you're being led here where we are in touch with God and involved in life, then come. Let all who have ears and need to, let them come. Is there anyone today?